Hi, so last week in class uh, I was talking about um, intercooled gas turbine engines uh, and I said that intercooling works because it reduces the temperature of gas in the compressor and therefore increases the density and uh, because of that it turns out that you need less work to compress the gas to a given pressure because of the relation that says del W equals VDP for a reversible steady flow process. So the smaller V is, the less work you need. Uh, which seems fair enough, but somebody asked a very insightful question in class, which is that if you cool the gas coming out of the compressor, then you need to add more heat to the gas in combustion to get it to the same turbine inlet temperature. And that seems like uh, a sound argument. So the only way to get to the bottom of this is to properly analyse the cycle. I can't see any easy way of explaining uh, well why intercooling works or why it should improve overall cycle efficiency as, it's, as it claims to do. So um, what I'm going to do is walk through an analysis of a uh, gas turbine engine with a single intercool stage. My diagram is a bit uh, cluttered here. Uh, so the gas path is uh, from the low pressure compressor to the uh, intercooler through the intercooler in the intercooler it gets brought back down to something near ambient temperature through the high pressure compressor out at state 4 through the combustion chamber uh, into the turbine the turbine in practice may be made up of two or more stages, but uh, from a thermodynamic point of view for this analysis that doesn't concern us. So that's the system that we're going to analyse. Let's draw a um, couple of state diagrams for that. Uh, the usual suspects, TS. Uh, so let's think about this. Uh, we are taking gas in state 1 at low temperature we compress isentropically uh, then we cool in the intercooler and let's make our life simple let's uh, assume the intercooler is the best it can possibly be it's a big well designed intercooler so it cools the gas right back down to inlet temperature which typically is the ambient temperature you can't do any better than that with an intercooler uh, so we come to the uh, from the intercooler to the high pressure turbine another isentropic compression three four then we add heat to the gas and we come into the turbine that's supposed to be a vertical line we come into the turbine expand isentropically and then we cool at constant pressure uh, to get back to our inlet state isentropically we go into the uh, intercooler and an ideal intercooler would be constant pressure an ideal intercooler would be constant pressure just like a uh, combustion chamber is compress isentropically in the second compressor stage we add heat at constant pressure and we expand isentropically uh, and we cool the gas at constant pressure. So that's the system that we're uh, going to analyze. Now let's, in order to have a baseline to compare it against, let's compare it against a simple Brayton cycle. And I'm going to uh, compare it against a simple Brayton cycle that has the same uh, T5 and the same overall pressure ratio. So if we had a simple Brayton cycle and the same inlet state, okay, the same inlet state is just atmospheric conditions, so there's not much, uh, that's not going to change very much. Uh, so if we had a simple Brayton cycle with this pressure ratio, we would just compress isentropically all the way up to uh, this curve here. Remember, this is a constant pressure curve. Uh, and I'm going to call that state uh, 2 prime uh, on our PV, and the simple cycle then continues around uh, that loop. On the PV diagram, it would mean that this process 1 to 2 continues all the way up to combustion pressure. We'll call that state uh, 2 prime as well. 
and that's our uh, simple Brayton cycle. Okay. Let's put some numbers in this cycle. Um, so we have something concrete to analyze. We could analyze all this algebraically, but just to get a feel for it, let's pick some typical numbers. So let's take, uh, let's pick typical atmospheric conditions at inlet. We want to find out here if this intercooled cycle is more efficient than the uh, simple Brayton cycle. Uh, if not, why not? Um, let's take a pressure ratio of 10. Uh, we're going to need to specify our turbine inlet temperature as well, which is T5. 1200, let's take it as 1200 Kelvin. Okay, so let's do some uh, analysis of this. We're going to need to specify something about the intercooling process. Okay, uh, we need to say there are an infinite number of possible uh, intercooled cycles. We could, uh, we can uh, do a lot of compression in the low pressure compressor, in which case uh, P2 is high and T2 is high, so we might have a state 2 that's up here somewhere, or we might have a state 2 that's way down the bottom. Let's put it somewhere in the middle. Uh, let's say um, P2 over P1 equals 3. Now, let's do some analysis on this. Throughout this whole thing, we are going to uh, assume um, cold air standard assumptions, uh, which means um, everything is reversible, everything is internally reversible. Um, adiabatic compressor and turbine. Uh, constant uh, CP ideal gas. Okay, the standard air standard uh, assumptions. Uh, also steady flow and we're going to neglect um, KE, kinetic energy and potential energy. So for the compressor, 